Hi Anna, uh, my name's Janine Butcher, I'm 43, I am a stay at home mum, I'm married with three boys, uh, two autistic boys, uh, I'm a stay at home mum, I live on the Wirral, I have been in the Truther community since September the 11th 2002, it was the first year anniversary of the World Trade Centre and so they there was a documentary on Channel 4 about it. I think it was called 102 Minutes That Changed America or something like that. But after that I went on to the internet to try and find out some more information or some footage and I came across the documentary Loose Change. So that is where it all started for me. Now. Obviously that was 19 years ago or something like that. But uh, I did take a break from the conspiracy theories uh, to when my children were younger, but they're older now and I've got more time, so I do like to keep uh, informed of what's going on in the world. Now, you said something yourself, I think it was to Robbie Williams, about you had had a feeling last year that something was going to happen and I felt that too and I even made a comment about it on my Facebook page because people think oh you know Ginny the tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorist so I like to make a document of what I say just to see if it happens and I had made a comment last year on Facebook and to my husband and my eldest son and said you know I feel like something is gonna happen I feel that it's building up to something and I said I think at the end of March the beginning of April next year something huge is gonna happen and then I thought it might be like an alien disclosure of some kind or you know an extraterrestrial disclosure which we've had this week as well by the way uh, so when all this came about I kind of already I'd seen it coming so I like to research I encourage anybody to do their own research there's plenty of information out there if you just know where to look join a, a, a site I have joined a site called uh, Truth Seekers UK which is brilliant because actually the admin of that site has set up sites within the site for local areas so I'm Wirral but I'm also the moderator and a member of Truth Seekers Merseyside I'm also a member and a moderator for Truth Seekers Liverpool and there is a Cheshire group I mean all over the country there are groups and people say to me all the time about how happy they feel that they have found a group where there are people in their own area so they don't feel so alone now, being the moderator is hard work, trying to get the message out there and people have got all kinds of different information but I always encourage people to do your own research. My biggest problem with the Covid is it's the doctors and the science, it's the Dr Andrew Kaufman, you know, a revered doctor and he studied MIT, he's and Dr. Rashid Bittar and uh, Kyle Sadal. These people, why would they put their reputations, their careers, their lives on the line on the back of a conspiracy theory? These are intelligent people. It would seem like madness to just start to make these accusations about the truth of COVID. My biggest question is that in the four institutions in the first place that studied, none of the institutions, and they have openly admitted this, ever purified a virus in the first place. The very first stages called Cox postulates was never done. A virus has never been purified or isolated, even now. Now for something that's gonna close down the country ruin the economy, damage our children's education, people's mental health, 
why would you not get your absolute best scientists, your best equipment and do them experiments or tests or whatever to your absolute best standards? In this instance, it's not been done. It's never been addressed. These people are just deplatformed, they're silenced, they're called conspiracy theorists and it's just the, the issues that they brought up have never been addressed. Now, it's it just so, everything, it's like building your house on sand, you know, everything looks really good and you can build it really brilliant, but if the foundations are made of sand, it's eventually it's going to fall down and that is exactly what's happened with COVID because the very first important tests were never done properly, so everything that comes after that is just all, you know, lies, basically. Now, I feel personally like I am racing against time. It's like I'm on this huge race to try and get people together to join these groups. And I feel like I'm doing it. I'm trying to race against a mandatory vaccination. One good thing I found that has come about because of all of this is, yes, we have got a lot more people in our Truth for Community now. So, you know, and some of these people from all different walks of life, you know, we're not all tinfoil hat wearing nutcases. It's also made people do the research and other things have started to come up, like, you know, the vaccinations, the MMR thing, you know, the cover up of that. I've got two autistic children myself. I've always avoided the subject, but everything going on now has made me look into it. And I have had my eyes opened about other things as well. I feel that people, the, uh, it's really hard to describe I feel that the fear at, at the beginning I could understand that people weren't seeing it but because they were so frightened but I mean or something all the time the Public Health England have done this to the numbers and this isn't right and that isn't right and at this point if you are not a conspiracy theorist then you are a coincidence theorist and in my opinion that's far worse I do hope that people wake up, join together and get their voices heard because people think that everything is just going to go back to normal and it isn't. It really isn't. The life that we knew before is never going to come back and that's going to be a shock to some people. The surveillance, the the introduction of, you know, a, 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 a sort of like spied on Big Brother type state it's all coming about and I don't have a mobile phone I choose not to have one because I see people it's like the walking dead everybody is just attached to these devices and they've got their little children running alongside them mummy this mummy that and they're just so consumed with like what is going on on this screen they're not even like having a conversation with their children so I decided two years ago to get rid of my smartphone or and I have a house phone I have a computer at home I do have ways of keeping connected but so what's gonna happen with the track and trace for me because I don't have a smartphone I don't want one does that mean that I won't be allowed to go shopping because I refuse to have a phone with an app <sighs> Anna you do great work and I just really really hope that people wake up and quick because the one question I have which frightens me and keeps me awake at night is if COVID-19 is non-existent or it's nowhere near as bad as they tell us then you've got to ask yourself what is the vaccine for really? Peace out.